We are at BBI Auto Sport in Huntington Beach, California with the Tim, hey. and he's one of the few people on the face of the planet that we trust to mount and balance these one-off spark wheels. Yeah. Tell me about the wheels there. Yeah, the these Tim. are wild. These are probably some of the most beautiful wheels I've ever seen. I mean, I've seen a lot of a lot of fun stuff, but I mean, all the machine work, and I love that you kept the tooling path live, and you guys did a clear Cerakote on this. So typically, I, right, look, we have McLaren wheels here, we have these carbon fiber wheels here. Check these things out, 100% carbon fiber by uh, Carbon Revolution. We, we do magnesium wheels that cost more than the car I drive every day. We're surrounded by Porsches, but Tim, but your daily is a? Chevy. What? 2500. Powered by a? Diesel? <laughs> yeah. Powered by a, a something that has a lot of Banks parts on it. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's natural. Guess what? Every, every single car that's pulled out of this shop is typically by a diesel. And typically you see a Banks sticker on the side of it. And, you know, there's just, there's these synergies that between, whether it's 911s, whether it's McLarens or trucks, haulers, motorhomes, the whole, the whole gig is we're all motorsport enthusiasts and... The diesel market, I think, is 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 a pretty interesting and unbelievable one. They, they have to get to the track have somehow. To be by something, yeah. Right. And typically, if you ask half of my clients, they like their truck more than the race car because the race car's all breaking down. The truck's always uh, keeps going. So, it's one of those gigs that it, it, the synergies are there, and th there is no difference between what we do, what Banks does, what other hot rodders do. We're hot rodding cars. We're you know we're trying to take what the factory did, a nice canvas. We're trying to tailor it to what our clients want. And I see the same synergies with um, with Banks and, and all you guys. So it's it's just such a natural, easy fit. I walked through your guys' shops, shops, and it just felt like I'm at a big version of BBI, but bigger cars, heavier engines. So I'm, right. I'm glad to be the tiniest little part. I said, I wanna be part of Lockjaw no matter what. I don't care if I have to take a rug or rag and wipe the side of the car or mount some tires or anything. And Jay's like, oh, by the way, it's Saturday. Can you come to the shop, open up, and mount some tires? I'm like, done. We're in. So. Okay, well, take us through what you're doing here right, for so those who have never seen tires being mounted. All right, real quick. So we, we, have, we have a set of 22s, 25 series, 245, 25, 22s. Uh, so the sidewall doesn't move. And what I'm going to do, I've got some paste here. This is called Euro Paste. It's just, they, they call it, back in the day, we used to call this soap. But um, it's, it's, a, it's a lubricant that actually will dry after, I would say, a couple of hours. And it, it helps, not only does it help slide the tire over this bead and, and lock into the seat, but it also helps um, seal it after after it drives up. So I, I use actually on these, I use a lot, and, and typically on a normal tire that has a little more sidewall, I would just do the, 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 um, the, the beads itself, but here I'll do the seats on the wheel, and then, and then I'll get a little bit on the barrel, and this is, this is a little bit over like what you'd wanna do, but I'm trying to, really get this tire to seat on here quick because this this stuff makes me nervous it's about in in my like difficulty level it's about as zero to zero is like a like a camry and 10 is like this is a 10 so this is very low profile tire and you have you have features here in the wheel that typically when you're and i'll show you when we're mounting it a tire as it's as no matter what so the tire is only this the bead right here is this diameter right so then you have to get it over this diameter. What you have to do is you have to take half the tire up here and half the tire below so it sits, this is called the drop seat right here. So this bead will sit into here. So the actual diameter of this is equal to the diameter of the bead. So something has to give, but we have these features here that you don't want to scratch. And these are, these are beautiful, look at all this. So the tire, when, when I'm going to roll this over, I'm going to predict that the tire is going to either get caught on this and it gave us problems or it's just barely gonna slide over the top of it and, uh, and, and see, so we're gonna see what happens. And uh, give us some backstory on this valve. So I stopped by uh, a local tire shop up by us, Tucker Tire, they were uh, very nice to donate a couple of these valve stems. We, I don't think we have a clearance issue, but the calipers, we had a set of uh, Black Rhino 20 inch wheels. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's a good and idea. as a tester, um, and we had, how much, a, how much room did you have? We had a, a business 20. card between the caliper and the inside. Would you call this the, the the inside of the barrel? The inside of the barrel. So you had a business card between a caliper on a on a twenty inch wheel. Correct. Okay, so we these are twenty twos. Correct. 
and I'm gonna assume that the barrel is very, very close to the same shape, right? Because there's the there's a, basically a a shape that that wheel manufacturers follow that's very close. The that's correct. SAE standard. Yeah, SAE, yes. Yeah, yep. So if let's all right. So you had the credit card. Now, no, no, credit card wouldn't fit. Okay. I tried one. I tried my okay. ATM card. Right. A business card did fit. All right. So we have tw a 22. So we're gonna. So you only have one more inch of clearance because a 22. In, in if you bisect that, you only have one inch over that 20, 20 inch wheel. So you cut that in half. So here's the seat to the top, 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 top of the cap. We're at 720,000. So it's basically th about three quarters of an inch. That gives us, if you, if you take your credit card, you have, it is 50,000. So you'll need, you'll have, that puts us at 800. We have two, so we have less than a quarter inch, which actually is, ma that's massive amounts of room. So if you look at where those two points are, that's how far we're gonna be free from caliper. So that's, yeah, we've got enough. Gobs of room. <laughs> There's that, seal it from the inside. All right, so we got the balsam cap off, um, cap, or the, the, the core out of there. So let's see if we can slide this tire. Now these are directional. They're directional. So. These are nittos and they so are. Uh, naturally, if the wheels spin in this way, these fans would extract the hot air out and disperse them, right? Instead of scooping air in. Correct. Yes, the they out. are going. They're traveling this direction. Right, so here, this tire, the directional, outside, inside. So we're gonna drop this one on here. Here we get this up out of the way. So this is what makes me nervous. This, this part here it should just there we go. Get past that valve stem. And now, I don't want to scratch your wheels. Now, <laughs> drop the low, low, just head down. No. Nope. Manual. Okay, so that's down in the bead. I don't like this. I don't want that to touch. So when we start rolling, I'll try to lift that up. That is a, uh, that's an old school cellular antenna. Yep, yeah, so I got my Nokia in the other room. <laughs> Okay, so that's right there. I'm not usually nervous, but I'm nervous. So anyways, what we were talking about earlier is now you have to have this small bead fit around something that's actually 1.25 inches bigger in diameter. As this pulls down, the idea is to get that in the drop seat and this thing's gonna try to roll itself around and as that gets in the drop seat, there's gonna be the sweet spot as after, hopefully, if everything works right, right about here, it's gonna look like it's pulled real tight and I'll slowly, slowly, slowly walk the thing over and it'll drop in, hopefully. So that's that's the idea. So, and uh, there's no pressure on me because this one of one left front wheel uh, looks like it's taken half a year to machine. There's a lot of machining in this thing. Okay. So I'm gonna sort of slowly start working this thing around. Get everything set. Try to get this thing to walk over into that drop seat. And you'll see what happens. This big gap right here, what it should do is close up. And if everything goes right, this goes not on the, the bead seat, but in the drop seat. And as you can see, like my hand, that's, that's how far, that's how much further down that drop seat is, right? From the edge of the wheel. And that's what we wanna see. So come over here, check this out right here. This is the bead that we're gonna seal on right here. And what we want is this to go underneath that. and. If I pull that tight, pull this tight, and see this is rise, rose up quite far, what's gonna happen is if this goes right, that will, there it goes. It fell underneath there. So now, not really far enough though. So, yeah, see now it's starting to try to fold underneath there. And now this is what I was worried about. This whole, this bridge right here, we have to try to seat that. So I'm gonna slowly mess with this. And it's so tight, the wheel's actually spinning more than the tire. You see this? See that? Uh, this is taking a lot of energy to do. Nice and easy. Actually, I'm gonna put a little bit more soap under here. Yeah, we're good here. Okay. And so for, for reference, this is a 245.25, so it's like literally no sidewall. All right, it looks like things are moving in the right direction. So I'm gonna actually let up just a hair. I'm gonna let up just a little here. Relax all this and see if we can get this thing to slide over. Okay. 
get rid of this. So now we get a little more, a little less tension on. See, this is the spot that makes me nervous, right? Always right here. And you just have to slowly be patient. And then I can actually probably let up on this a little too to release some tension. There it goes. It looks like. Nice. <laughs> We're going to see what. <laughs> All right, you just passed it. Right, right over here. Right there. Hidden behind a spoke. Nice. That's uh, that's what you want to see. Got some core. All right, now some core in. Make sure we didn't like. Mar any of that Cerakote. And this was a 500 pound block. This was not a, uh, you know, a lot of times with our, our other wheel companies, like these over here, yeah. they'll buy forgings, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's hollowed out on the backside. This is from a billet. This is from a billet. Holy. I bought four billets and sent them to Tyler, Texas. You this know, was a 500 pound block and now I mean, it's 43 pounds. That's unbelievable. Yeah, look at this. But look at the fit of rim, tire, beat, uh, rim, uh, edge protector, and the the taper and the the tuck on that. It just it, it looks perfect. That's awesome. This is perfect. Look at this thing. Yeah, this is a work of art. So the other thing that we were just talking about is is so sometimes you you look at a, a wheel and you don't understand, or you you look at anything in life, nature your cars, everything, you're like, man, it's just so pleasing to the eye. And as you look at something like this, uh, Jay was pointing out to me some of these features. So if you follow this line, look at this beautiful radius right here. There's so much machine work here. And look at that, it, every all the contours. So that, that basically, that radius continues all the way through here. But what, what happens here is this goes all the way out to the rim seat, but it starts developing an edge and a radius right here. And if you see right through here, now you have a lip and that lip goes down through here Watch this, it falls around here and it goes all the way through here and it falls all the way to the back side of this, this foil. It, those are the things and the touches that, that you don't really ever see, but you're like, why do I like this so much? And you start like, this wheel is an onion. If you look at this, I can look at this wheel for an hour and I start finding like tool paths and why they are and everything's on purpose and everything's for a reason. Look at these beautiful radiuses right here to get the air moving and you know, it's, it's pretty, pretty cool. So this, actually I was just feeling this, this is a proper cord of a wing right here. So it, it's thick bodied, it radiuses out and then it tapers beautifully to the end of this. It, this one's even nicer, and it's, it, but it's cool. So, but this edge right here, follow that around. Goes here, here, all the way through here. And then it, right here, I can still feel it. And then it disappears into like perfect. And then the, it starts again. And, and then John, you, Jonathan at Spark is, uh, you can, I mean, he's a, a student of, of art. He went to Art Center up oh, in Pasadena. Oh, nice. And, and then he's been making uh, amazing steering wheels and, and one-off wheels like this. But and also the consistency of tool paths and everything that, that's here. This is bonkers. This is everything you want in a wheel. And look at this. This is, so to have a tool path go like this down the side of a spoke, the amount of time that that takes. And then that falls into this radius and into this lug pocket. And watch this. This radius it, it's not the same diameter because it's on a taper, but that radius maintains all the way around. Those are the little things that that just that blow me away. That the amount of energy and like it, it's it's pretty impressive. I mean, like I said, this wheel's like an onion. The more you look at it, the more you see. It's very very cool.